You know, a major part of manufacturing is material handling. You simply have to move raw materials into the plant, you've got to move finished goods out of the plant. I'm with Lou Micheletto. He's manager for Integrated Solutions with Yale Materials Handling Corporation. And Lou, uh, in terms of materials handling, I mean, we, every plant uses it. Every plant has solutions that are human piloted, but we're looking at an autonomous solution back here. This is robotics now. Yale involved in robotics, what? Well, through the years we've done a number of uh, considerable research and what we found from the Department of Labor Statistics that 36% of material handlers turn over annually. So we looked at what are the options. Uh, we started searching for a company that could assist us in making our unit autonomous. We found a company called Bellio and Bellio uh, provides the technology, the software, we provide the standard forklift truck, and together we have the robotic lift truck. Now, Lou, we've seen uh, um, AGV-driven factory operations in many places. They often they require considerable reconfiguration of lines, considerable reconfiguration of, of warehousing. The whole stock picking, whole material handling system often has to be turned completely upside down to accommodate AGVs. In this case, these vehicles are also human, potentially human pilot. When we started searching into uh, navigating our truck, we wanted to be able to, to have no infrastructure necessary in a facility. So we created something called natural navigation. And what that means is we look at your building columns, we look at machinery, we look at rack, we look at walls, anything that is a permanent structure, and we guide off of that structure. What we'd like to be able to say is it gives us a great deal of flexibility. That flexibility from your end means you don't have to change your building in order to change your process. With our design, our, tr our truck can be handled autonomously or just by grabbing a handle. It converts it to a manual operation. An individual can run the truck, do what they have to do, complete the task, put it back onto a virtual tab path, touch a button twice, and it's back operational doing autonomous functions. Now we think of automation at this level as being very expensive, only suitable for the very largest of operations at that point. What scale of facility would, would benefit from this technology? So generally speaking, we start out, it should be a two or three shift application. Now when we look at, based on the degree of integration to a WMS system, uh, we, have, we are finding in applications that the ROI on a two shift is generally going to be 18 to 24 months on a three shift application is going to be 12 to 18 months. Okay, that's a, that's a very fast return on investment for this level of automation. Now, how about mixed applications? Applications where you, you want some autonomous capability, but you've also got still some, some legacy manual process going on at the same time. Can they coexist in the same plant? Sure, we actually call that cobiotics. And what we want to do is we look, when we do a risk assessment of an application, we define where will pedestrians be, where will conventional trucks be, and then we look to establish lanes that are effective for, for each one of those the three, the autonomous, the human, and the, the, um, the lift truck. If they have to be in the same lanes, there's a, a number of safety pieces, sensors that can be put on the truck, and that safety sensor will detect, slow down, and or stop if anything violates uh, a zone as is defined. And these sensors uh, don't require anything embedded in the facility you described, no reflectors, no, mag no magnetic zones. So this machine actually sees and then recognizes what it sees. Yeah, uh, sees, when we think of sees, we think of vision. And what we're doing as opposed to using vision, we're using a higher tech, uh, very similar to what's used in the autonomous cars. Uh, we're sensing the presence of something we didn't expect. When we, when we set up the navigation paths, we know what to expect. If something's there that's not supposed to be there, we go to a stop or a slowdown. Now, in a, a mixed operation environment where occasionally a human operates the truck at the same time, do my existing operators who are already uh, OSHA approved training, they're, they're, they're certified and ready to go, they require additional or specialized training to operate this equipment? Uh, uh, yes and no. Uh, knowing that they they will get on a truck just like they would normally. They would operate the truck. Where the special training comes is when we want to put the unit back onto a virtual path and convert it back to autonomous, uh, we do some training with it. But that's a training that um, any individual, 15 minutes, they pretty well understand 
how to move from manual to autonomous. Um, uh, payloads, capability, do we have uh, uh, psi reach, do we have options in that regard? Yeah, where we stand today, we have a, an end glider jack that's a single or double length that has 8,000 pounds capacity. We have a tugger that's capable of 15,000 pounds of towing weight. We have the unit that's running in the back that has vertical capabilities of up to 12 feet with weight up to 3,000 pounds. Downstream, we'll be automating a number of different style trucks we have in our in our arsenal today. Well, you just made my question. Is that, so will this technology, you think, work its way through the entire line ultimately? Uh, it will. That's Yale addressing the labor shortage with fully autonomous solutions, says Louis Gelato.